Well, good evening, fandom, or um, good afternoon, or good morning, or whatever hour it happens to be when uh, when a lot of you end up catching this video and it's not live anymore. We are the MCU's Bleeding Edge. We are live streaming this evening to do a Captain America, the Winter Soldier review. Um, let's get right into it to introduce everybody that's on the uh, roster tonight. Um, we've got, once again, Lord Deathman from Sakar.freeforms.net, um, Podcast of Champions. Um, it's good hey, to everybody. See you yeah, it's great to be here, Jeff. How Thanks you doing, Lord Deathman? I haven't. I we had we had a really good show on the podcast of Champions last Saturday, actually. Yeah, we were talking all things Eternals, and always you were bringing the heat, man. Great conversation. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deathman was busting my balls hardcore. But it was all good. So we got all in um, good fun. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Uh, so we've got Jeremy and Justin, the co-hosts of the We Are Marvel um, MCU podcast. And it's really good to meet you guys. Thank you for being on. Yeah, thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank Happy to be here. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, um, just, I'm, I mean, you guys mentioned being excited for the show earlier. I'm definitely jacked, you know, for this film myself. I've been waiting, wanting to review this. Um, yeah. We've got Jermaine, um, who is the host of the New Love podcast, and he's making his second appearance on The Bleeding Edge. What's up, brother? What's going on? It's good it's to see you again. Yep, yeah, it's good yeah. to see you again. We're happy to have you. And, of course, my co-host. The lovely cybernetic shark, veteran YouTuber. What is going on, brother? Lovely, exactly. lovely <laughs> beard, man. I'm gonna slap you. <laughs> oh, I don't slap know you. Was, you. Oh, yeah, issues. sure you don't. Sure yeah, you don't, bitch. That was a technical. That was technical issues. I don't know what happened. It's real there. strange. But, uh huh. Yeah, sure. So, anyways, I'll give you well, lovely. So just to launch into this, um, I've actually got some – got, I've got a surprise for everybody. I didn't even – I decided to keep this to myself how I wanted to start the show. It's not going to be anything crazy. Don't worry. Um, but right. um, If it's a fish Close video, on. I'm going to kill you. I'll just go ahead and drop it, and then we'll go ahead and talk about it. Ever since I got bit by that spider – I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. When you botched that spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider-Man. We started getting some visitors. from every universe. Hello, Peter. You're not Peter Parker. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> Wait, no, seriously, what's your actual name? There are others out there. We need to send them back. So, Scooby-Doo this crap. You know, all this is kind of your mess. I know a couple of magic words myself, starting with the word please. Please, Scooby-Doo this crap. You're flying out into the darkness to fight ghosts. What do you mean? They all die fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. Look, there has to be another way. There isn't. They're a danger to our universe. You're not gonna take this away from me. Peter. You're struggling. Damn it. Everything you want while the world tries to make you choose. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. To 
December 17th, exclusively at movie theaters. Tickets on sale November 29th, Spider Monday. Okay, well, so I thought that would be interesting to go ahead and, and throw out. I haven't seen that until just now. That was my first time seeing it. Um, oh, nice. And it's freaking oh, really? Um, And I thought, too, I thought it would be interesting because Jermaine, I don't know, did you see that trailer before that? No, this is my first time. That's what I was thinking. So I thought, you know, Deathman, have you seen that before up until now? I have. I did see it a little earlier today. Yeah, for the first time. But oh, still. okay. Good job. Right. So that'd be my third watching. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I don't blame you. I mean, it's really good. Um, there's a lot yeah. going on in it too. But I mean, just to yeah. kind of like, you know, th th just a just a quick like a mini, you know, segment, I guess, on this. Um, I'll just go ahead and go around the table and I'll start off with um with you, Jeremy. Um, what do you think of the Spider-Man three second trailer, man? Uh, I think it was great. I mean, it looked awesome. It, it's it might be giving away a little too much, but I'm not sure yet. I mean Obviously, we don't know the whole story yet. They've kept that pretty hush hush, um, and I definitely have seen, you know, being on the internet that there are some stuff that's been taken out. So I think that's going to be interesting to see what all's been taken out. But I think it looks awesome. I'm super excited about it. Um, a lot of it of what we thought was coming back is coming back, but I'm I'm interested to see how this is all going to play out. Cyber, what do you think, brother? I know we talked about we kind of talked about this a little bit this morning, but we didn't really get into it. I uh, honestly, I mean, it, it this is definitely a better trailer than the first teaser trailer, definitely, you know. Gives you a little bit more insight, shows you that all the different characters that we've seen in previous Spider-Man iterations are coming back. I mean, Goblin, I mean, I think the most fascinating of that trailer actually is that we saw new Goblin New Goblin, I don't know if it's going to be Dan DeHaan's version or if it's going to be, you know, uh, Harry from the Rami's trilogy. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's probably Dan DeHaan because of Sony. But at the same time, I thought that was interesting that they brought him back too, uh, you know, along with Sandman, Electro, Lizard, all those characters and stuff like that. I mean, I love the presence of Sandman back into it. I love that Thomas Ch Hayden Church is playing the character again. I thought he was fantastic as Sam, man. I enjoyed him. I, I know a lot of people hate Spider-Man 3. They thought it was a pretty crappy film. Uh, you know, not too great of a way to end a trilogy. Um, you know, what they did with Venom and everything. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think that there was so many bad merits. And I think Thomas Hayden Church was one of the better merits of that film. So that was nice to see that he officially was back and it showed him in the trailer. Uh, I thought the look of, you know... Electro looks a lot better than what they did in the Amazing Spider-Man 2, you know, making them all blue and, you know, and so he looked a lot better. Uh, but, I mean, William Defoe coming back as, you know, Green Goblin, amazing. I love that. I love that they had him give a voiceover. I love that, you know, Alfred Molina came back. I mean, it's just really good to see all these characters again and get more of a justice and also their place in the MCU because they all really were fantastic characters in their films. So it just looks like it's going to be a really fun film, and I'm looking forward to seeing it in December. Okay. Um, Justin, what do you think, brother? And I just want to p just put out there, obviously there's a clear indication that um, that uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is going to, I guess, like befriend or connect or team up with Doc Ock at some point or whatever. That's kind of the, the gist I got. But what, do, what are mm -hmm. your thoughts on the trailer, Justin? It looks fantastic, and it, it confirms some theories I had, because one of the big questions is, okay, how are you going to bring back Doc Ock, Green Goblin, when they died? Like, Sandman survived, but some of these other villains didn't, and it's interesting that they touch upon that and say, well, in their universe, you know, they were killed by Spider-Man, so it's like, okay, are they going to be taken right before their death? Is this yet an alternate universe where they didn't die and survived? Um... It's super interesting, and I remember thinking a couple months ago, back when it was like, okay, what's Spider-Man 3 even going to be? And I was like, God, I'd love to see Tom Holland go up against Doc Ock, because it's such a cool visual, and it's like, that if they could only get Alfred Molina back, because he is Doc Ock, and I just never thought that would be possible, so just to see that, and that image that they keep releasing of Spider-Man tangled up in his tentacles is just... That's worth the price of admission alone. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely epic without question. Like I already said, I mean, uh, I hate to repeat myself, but I don't know what else, how else to describe it because, I mean, um, I, I, I kind of get where Jeremy was coming from with, you know, maybe they revealed too much or something like that. But I would have to imagine that knowing how the track record of Marvel Studios with their trailers, that there's got to be more shit going on probably than like they even showed us in that, you know? Um, we could get well, you know what's funny yeah. is... I remember yeah. the the homecoming trailer, and going, God, they show every beat of that movie, and if you go back and look, they do. I mean, they show the boat mm-hmm. thing, they show Iron Man taking the suit back, they and they show tons of stuff that is basically all of the major beats of that movie. But when I saw the movie, I didn't think about it. It was just this is so good, and this is the best Spider Man movie we've ever had. I just got swept up on the ride, and so that's what I'm kind of hoping is happening here i think that final shot is definitely a final battle shot but i'm hoping by the time the movie comes out and we're swept up in the greatness of it it's not going to matter well um jermaine what do you what are your thoughts and i would just want to preface with jermaine that um jermaine is uh definitely a um an mcu part of the fan he's a part of the fandom he's a big mcu fan but he's a kind of a loose MCU fan. He doesn't pay attention to this stuff on a daily basis like a lot of us do. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of what are your thoughts, Jermaine, on seeing that for the first time? Man, I thought it was awesome. I mean, just to see like old characters that I had seen in the movies from the past, just to see them like resurface and what exactly is going to be their storyline, how are they going to specifically connect to the story? Um, And just to see like how... Or, or to allow my mind to expand in terms of what will this mean um, for Marvel and future movies like that for me was awesome to see. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I can I I mean, I can understand how probably I mean, I think everybody pretty much gets the gist of like the whole multiverse deal. Like it's not that complicated, but I think there probably are some people that maybe, you know, are a little confused about what goes on maybe in, to, in the events in that trailer. But um, Death Man, just to, just to like, um, you know, finish this up. What do you think? You saw the trailer today. What do you think about it? You know, what what, what are your what's your first take? Uh, my hot take right out of the gate is, I'm probably going to come out as the odd man out here. The trailer looks fantastic, and I'm not someone who like believes in grading a piece of marketing on on its merit. You know as as a like a thing it's this is not story it's um it's a trailer and they they really i think the trailer did the job that it was supposed to do in terms of showing us that this is really going to be an epic action-based story with um a lot of adventure uh type beats to it but you know on principle uh in terms of I, I think it would be weird for fans to completely forget the experience that we had with the previous Spider-Man 3, which was kind of overstuffed, right? I mean, modern critical reappraisal of Spider-Man 3 is a lot gentler than it was when Spider-Man 3 actually came out. So people are sort of, today, they're looking back more favorably on that film. But when Spider-Man 3 actually did come out, folks were like, wow, that was just a huge swing and miss. And all the elements that we had in terms of Spider-Man 3 are kind of here in this Spider-Man 3. So I'm kind of getting a little PTSD in terms of six villains, three different versions of Spider-Man, a co-starring superhero, right? You, you, you got a lot of stuff going on here, and it's going to be an incredible tightrope act for Sony to balance this, for Sony you know, slash Marvel to really balance what's going on in the story. But they certainly have us like a deer in headlights now, just looking at the trailer. If, you, if you're just thinking action, if you're just thinking nostalgia, if you're just thinking fan service, they have you. And there's no way that this film is not going to be a billion dollar sort of big deal at the theater. But I do have uh, trepidations about the use of the multiverse. This really feels like, in terms of how the story was constructed, like you're a toddler again pulling all your favorite toys out of your toy bin. And it doesn't matter where they came from. You know, they're from different play sets. I'll get a lizard here and I'll put in Sandman from this movie and some, but some, and then I'm going to knock them all around and have a great time. That's really fundamentally how this story feels like it was crafted to me. But the trailer, just as a piece of marketing and advertising, 
I think it really hit the mark um, incredibly well. Yeah, I mean, and I think that that's a good point. I think you made several good points. Um, and I think that, of course, we've had discussions before in the past about the fact that I would agree that I think that um, – the, the whole multiverse deal can be done the it can be done the right way and it can be done the wrong way um so I mean you know typically I want to be very optimistic and confident about what Marvel Studios does so I'm gonna you know I would just assume that they're gonna figure out how to make it work um was that was that Scarlet Witch that popped up in the trailer can anybody tell me that at one point I saw like a woman in the was that maybe Mary Jane? I'd have to see to, to I, make sure I know I remember seeing Aunt May running down the that oh, hall. Okay. That, maybe that's who it was yeah because i thought it was scarlet witch there for a minute and i'm i'm yeah. assuming th and that's that that's something right there where they haven't dropped that yet so that's still yet to come you know what i mean like i mean it's it, you know i don't i don't believe that marvel studios confirmed her in the film um no. at this point so but it's it's just assumed that she's going to be in there but um either way um uh, i thought that that was going to be interesting to maybe just get into that real quick i wanted to see it um, so now that we got that out of the way, let's just go ahead and dive into Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and I'll go ahead and just drop the trailers quick, and then we'll dive into that. Coming up on the drop zone, Cap. Can you do anything fun Saturday night? Well, all the guys in my barbershop quartet are dead, so... No, not really. You know, if you ask Kristen out from statistics, she'd probably say yes. That's why I don't ask. Too shy or too scared? Too busy! Was he wearing a parachute? No. No, he wasn't. I joined S.H.I.E.L.D. to protect people. Captain. To build a better world sometimes means tearing the old one down. And that makes enemies. Are you ready for the world to see you as you really are? You look out the window. You know how the game works. Disorder. War. All it takes is one step. We're going to neutralize a lot of threats before they even happen. thought the punishment usually came after the crime. S.H.I.E.L.D. takes the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. This isn't freedom. This is fear. You need to keep both eyes open. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Your work has been a gift to mankind. You've shaped the century. And I need you to do it one more time. You're up. It's time. enemies.
ready? All it takes is one step. People are gonna die. I can't let that happen. Captain America needs my help. When do we start? We just did. The price of freedom is high. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. You told me not to trust anyone. This is how it ends. Everything goes. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. Damn right. How do we know the good guys from the bad guys? If they're shooting at you, they're bad. Well, that was definitely enjoyable. I, I, to be honest with you, I only saw, I'd only seen one of them, um, one of those before those trailers themselves. Um, one of them I had never seen before, but, um, so, um, oh, do we, oh, do we, uh, it, uh, maybe Jeremy, I think maybe popped off and then he's going to pop back on because he's having a problem with his, um, here, let me see if we can get him back on. There you go, Jeremy. Hey. Is that working any better for you, brother? Uh, no, it's still about the same, but I can hear you guys. So that's what that's what's important. Okay. All right. So <laughs> um, based off of those trailers, guys, I just want to kind of just, you know, go around on that. Um, you know, what are your thoughts looking back in retrospect, um, kind of, you know, maybe seeing these years ago and everything and whatnot back in what, like, I guess, 2013 or whatever, um, you know, it, and then, you know, compared to kind of now, you um, what do you think, uh, Jermaine? Um, was that your first time seeing the trailers? No, I've seen the trailers before, either um, at the movies or watching TV a couple times online as well. Okay, so what do you, what I mean? What do you what do you take out of the out of those trailers? Like, I mean, in reference to the film, like what kind of stands out to you? Um, what stands out is the amount of action that they didn't put into the trailers, which is actually in the movie, um, which I really appreciate it. Um, when, when you actually watch the movie, it's kind of like, um, for the most part, it starts off with action and then there's a little of plot development and then there's a whole lot of action and then a little plot development and a whole lot of action. And so like for me, man, that was like, you know, catnip. It was like, give me more, give me more, give me more. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and um, I guess I'll probably go over to you next, Jeremy. If you can, if you if you can hear me, all right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what do you what do, what do you take kind of out of out of the trailers, uh, my friend? I mean, um, obviously, it's the first time that we get to see the Winter Soldier, so that's definitely pretty impactful. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, we actually talked about this on, on our podcast. Um, I I do remember that when I first saw this trailer, I. I didn't even put together that it's Bucky is the Winter Soldier. I, so I remember thinking spoilers. It's just, <laughs> sorry, <guys. laughs> yeah, I remember that reveal that I was. It, so for me, it was like it was a big reveal, um, which was very cool. I remember at the time, but but yeah. So so seeing the trailers and, and seeing this guy and the way he catches the, um, I was gonna say frisbee, the shield. <laughs> Just it catches it so easily and throws it back. I remember thinking, like, wow, this guy is legit. Like Captain America just threw that thing and he caught it. Like, how are you going to stop this guy? So yeah, I, I remember when I first saw the trailer, I was super excited about this. And yeah, sorry, sorry for the spoiler, everybody. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I think everybody will survive. Um yeah. <laughs> Lord Deathman, what do you, what, what do, what's your take on the uh the, the, the trailers for this the Captain America, the Winter Soldier film? I have some very vivid memories of these trailers coming out. And I remember being very intrigued by the first trailer and then completely sold on the whole idea by the time the second trailer came around. 
Um, I remember, you know, the fandom reaction to the first trailer was mixed. I don't want to say it was like polarized or controversial, but there were some people who were like, uh, you know, the MCU's at a tipping point here. This could be where it gets too comic booky and we leave those general audiences behind. Now, now you want us to believe there's a guy with a metal arm who's like this Terminator proxy running around, you, you know. But it, it was a critical moment for the MCU. And I remember that this marketing and advertising was really pivotal to it. And they nailed it on that second trailer. I was like, I'm, I'm here for this. The Winter Soldier looks like a badass. He's everything that I remember from the comic books. And um, yeah, I had high expectations for the movie at that point, which okay. were met and exceeded. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would definitely agree with you. What do you, what do you, what about you, Justin? Uh, for me, I read the books um, when I saw the first Iron Man, and you know fell into the idea of the Avengers. I read the Ultimates and fell in love with Captain America. I was showing the guys before we started. I have a Captain America wall of artwork and stuff. He's my favorite character. Uh, so That's when awesome, they announced, man. yeah, I have a tattoo I'd show it to you, but I don't want to That's make people really nauseous cool, with dude. the camera movements. I love that. You know what? I'm actually thinking about myself personally getting a Captain America tattoo at, um, at some point here in the future. Um, so hopefully I'll be joining you. Yeah, I've had it for over 10 years now. I mean, it's, it's awesome. But I, so when they announced Winter Soldier at Comic-Con, I immediately knew what that was. And I had read the Brubaker run of the book where he brought Bucky back as the Winter Soldier. So my mind immediately went to, this is going to be amazing. This is, like, the MCU is great up to this point, but we had just had Thor The Dark World, which was not that great at that point, and still isn't. Um, and <laughs> I was you, like... What, are you kidding me? It's... it's... <laughs> That's a, that's a good movie, man. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but I, I love them all. But I knew that Winter Soldier was going to be a turning point. And it was, for me, it was, it's not going to be kid stuff anymore because I know how serious the story is. And it was just like, this is going to be, you know, I, f I felt like I was almost apologizing for the first Captain America movie when it came out because I was a fan. And it was a little slower. It was World War II era, and people were not as jazzed about it. And I just kept going, just wait. Just wait until they do Winter Soldier. You'll understand why I love this character. Yeah. Well said. Definitely. Cyber. Uh, just like when I saw them back in 2013, they just give me awe. Uh, it, it looked like it was going to be a great film. It looks like it was going to be fun. It looked like it was going to have lots of action. I mean, the helicarrier scenes are probably one of my favorite parts of the film, especially when the one, you know, ends up running into the building that Sam is running through and Rumlow gets uh, taken out. Uh, I mean, that scene right there was so much fun. And uh, I remember seeing that in the trailer, just thinking, oh, that's going to be epic on the big screen. Uh, but yeah, these trailers just, uh, you know, they're, they're really great. They hold up eight years later, and they're just a really fantastic looking film. And it holds up because this film is super fantastic. It is. It's an outstanding film. Um, and uh, we actually were doing a show recently uh, covering this article where this uh, this guy from um, CNET um, ranks like the rank the whole MCU and uh, like all the films. And he actually uh, had like he had like I mean he had the Avengers as like uh like being worse than captain marvel in his ranking like you know what i mean so just to give you an idea of what we were working with um so i'm not even going to talk about where he put captain america the winter soldier but it, moving Do we on have that guy's address jeff no i have but i have reached out to him um i i did reach out to him um, and so has William my buddy from uh, from and let me go ahead and, and plug them geek news now network um, that we are now a, a happy part of. Um, uh, basically, um, we reached out to him, you know, to see if maybe we could get him to go, go on a show to explain, like, where he come up with some of this stuff. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's like delusional. Yeah, I mean, 
um, you know, but whatever. So, so basically, um, as far as the movie goes, as far as um, what I want to like start off with um, to, to go around the table <laughs> with you guys um, is just how things start off. We get Cap on like uh, lapping um, Falcon, uh, you know, they're running or whatever. They end up meeting and everything. And um, Black Widow pulls up in this like really nice, cool looking car looking all hot and everything and whatnot. And like, you know, Cap gets gets in with her and everything and shit. And that, that was pretty cool. Um, and then we get into um, the mission with the ship, with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Grillo and, you know, Black Widow. And, of course, we get, you know, the part from the trailer where, where Cap jumps out of the plane with no parachute, which is very similar to what Bucky did with on Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, he kind of did the same thing. Just to give you an, you know, an impression of, you know, like their durability with the super soldiers serum. Um, but um, and of course we get like, you know, the excellent, excellent action sequences on the ship with Cap and with Black Widow, especially Cap. We get the Cap fighting Baytrock fight, which is pretty dope, um, you know, and then kind of right at that point, you know, as the, the, when they wrap the mission up. Starting with that, guys, like your thoughts basically just on that part of the film and that, you know, that whole array of scenes that, you know, kind of occurs during that time period. Um, starting with you, Lord Deathman, you know, where, where are you at with that? What are your thoughts with that part of the film? Wow. that So you're talking about that first sprint that we got from the yep. opening of, of the film till we get uh, to, to, to the first sort of fight action scene. And take your time. Where, where... You, you got as much time as you want, man. I appreciate that because I got a lot to say, <laughs> but I'm going to try not to bore everybody to death, uh, you, you know, monologuing here. But the opening of the film where you see these two veterans, you know, juxtaposed against each other, Steve, this super soldier, man out of time type situation. And then you get uh, Sam, who's modern day veteran, you know, both guys have seen some action, but they're coming from different places and they have a lot to offer each other. So the chemistry between the two of them right away is super solid. And I really appreciated that, them trying to do that relationship building between the two men, because it really pays off later on as their partnership sort of deepens. Um, this movie, when you see Black Widow, just for those few seconds where she comes to pick up Steve right there, this movie has the best rendition of Black Widow of all of the movies, perhaps even better than the Avengers, because the Russo brothers really go for that morally ambiguous Black Widow that, that I've always liked her the best when she's living in this gray zone. She's not necessarily interested in good or evil and, and those kind of particulars, but she's in the comic books at her best, uh, Natasha is interested in her own precision, how well she can do something. Uh, so so they really nailed that. and. You're, you know, as you're watching it in the beginning, you're, 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 my thought was this is going well. This is going swimmingly. When you see Cap dive out of the, uh, the, the, the plane, the banter that they have talking about how his modern day life is going. I was like, this movie is going to be high quality. And from there, I just felt completely safe in the Russo brothers embrace. It was like, <laughs> I don't think that they're going to not stick the landing with this perfect uh, opening to the film, especially with the action sequences on the boat. You have Captain America in this really great action scene, not too over the top, but enough to keep you excited and engaged. And then you have uh, Natasha running her own side op at Fury's behest. Again, showing you it's a complicated landscape and, and Steve has to get used to modern Warcraft. This isn't World War II. You know, it's hard to know who your friends are, you know, what's going on. It's not just access powers versus allied. This is a complicated battle space, um, which um, I, I really respected the Russo brothers for bringing that level of sophistication to the film. Well said. Well put, Lord Deathman. Uh, Jeremy, same thing to you, man. Same, same, same question. What, you know, what are your thoughts on that whole the, that that jumble of scenes there in the beginning of the film yeah I, I mean i loved it it was you know the different cap than what we were used to seeing you know he's a lot more uh comfortable in his own skin i you would say um and just that kind of that spy thriller kind of feel that it has when he's sneaking up on the ship 
and just taking people out and just the speed that he has and precision it was i thought it was amazing like it, it was the best it's one of the probably the best scenes for cap i can think of i mean there's of course much better ones that i'm thinking of now but that is one of the top ones there oh most definitely yeah um just the whole deal when he's on the ship and everything and whatnot, and he's fighting all those guys mm-hmm. and everything and throwing the shield and, and everything and whatnot. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Just ruthless. I love it. Yeah. And him, when he's like <laughs> bait rock, that's awesome too, because he's like, throws the shield. He puts the shield on yeah. his back and everything. And he, you know, yeah. and he's like down to fight him and everything. I thought that that was really, really cool, man. Yeah. Like, with the, you know, with like, Batch rock calling him out. And I thought you were more than a shield. And yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah all right, man. I'll show you. I'll that show you on more really than a shield. Cool. That's how slick <laughs> the movie, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, Marcus and McFeely did a really good job with the script and this, you know what I mean? Like they really did, yeah. um, the story because it's really crisp. You know what I mean? Like the humor is really with it. Like, it's very like, you know, um, the, the, the humor, the, the, the vibe, the, the, uh, you know, the ambience of like, you know, kind of like the scenes and the film, even right up the beginning is one that's very slick. You know what I mean? Like it still, again, it's got that spy feeling to it, but at the same time, um, the narrative with Nat like um trying to pepper Steve about like his dating life and stuff like that is just hilarious to me. Yeah. Um, it but is. Cyber, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, that I mean, it's a good introduction to the film. Uh, it, it's a nice little kind of like ease into the film, into the action. Oh God, I'm echoing. We can't hear I don't know it. why I'm echoing. Oh, you can't? Okay. Good, good, good. Anyways, so, yeah, it's a good introduction and nice, slow, I feel it's like a nice little slow burn into, uh, you know, how the movie starts. We get, you know, kind of that, like, campy moment where, you know, Cap's running around Sam, you know, at the beginning, and then you had Black Widow rolling up, and you kind of, it's like, oh, the movie is, you know, moving on, and then all of a sudden you have, you know, that giant scene of action. So it's like you have that kind of, like, you know, camper and stuff like that that you're talking about, like when they're talking about Steve's dating life on the in the aircraft and stuff before they get to the boat and all that kind of stuff. So it's a kind of, kind of nice little slow burn, I feel, to get you going into the film, and then it like all of a sudden bursts into action. And you got that great, you know, fight sequence on the boat. Uh, you know, with Cap, you got you know Natasha doing some fighting. You know, you have Rumlow doing some fighting and stuff like that. So I mean, it's a really good action sequence just to start the film off. So you have a really good, like, I feel, introduction to the film. So I really enjoyed it. Okay, Jermaine. Yeah, so, I mean, basically the the same thing that everyone has said thus far. Um, I really enjoyed um, the, the action scenes. Um, they really came alive. Um, I wasn't paying so much attention to... Um, what was happening with the CGI it was really just about, wow, you know, did this just really happen? Um, did he throw his shield and it bounce off and it, it hit someone? And like, and then um, especially when uh, when he threw it at Bucky, Bucky just caught it and <laughs> just started using it. And you know what I'm saying? Like that that whole little action scene was was awesome. Um, and just to talk about um, Black uh, Black Widow. Um, her character, um, I, I remember when I first saw her character, like I, I caught that, you know, she was more morally ambiguous. Um, but I just, I guess, you know, because I didn't read the comics, I just, I just assumed that over time she was working towards becoming, I guess, a quote unquote, a better human. And so that kind of explained why, you know, she, she wasn't, you know, as amb- ambivalent, um, towards, I don't know, um, towards doing the right thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess that's what, those were my impressions. I get, where, sure. I get where you're coming from. I get where you're coming from. I do. Um, I think that, I mean, there's so many, there's so many interesting aspects of, of um, even just the, the, the first part of the film. I mean, there's so much you could talk about, but um, Justin, what are your thoughts? Uh, for me, I, you know, I loved Falcon when I was a kid. They, there was this animated show that Fox did. Yeah. That was Avengers United We Stand or They Stand. And I got introduced to Falcon. So just seeing him in live action was exciting. And then when they get to the Lemurian star and you see Cap in action, 
really to me for the first time. Like he was he did a good job in the first half. They did a pretty decent job with him in the first Avengers movie, but when I think of Captain America in action, it's that scene on the Lemurian Star. It's that shield flying around, hitting six guys before it comes back to him. It's, you know, getting a knife and getting the guy in the hand before he hits the alarm. Like, it just, it sold me on these guys did it right. Yeah, they, they definitely gave us, um, I mean, and, and this will, I'll roll this, I'll roll this into, right into the, the ne- my next question for y'all. Um, how, what about the contrast between the first Captain America film and the second Captain America film? If you want to just, Justin, if you want to go with that, like, just, I'll just stick with you, you know, like, yeah. contrast and compare, like, you know what I mean? The feel of like, you know, the first Avenger compared to like Winter Soldier. Well, the thing for me is that they're all Captain America. You know, if you look at the first one, it's a period piece, World War II. You look at Winter Soldier, it's spy versus spy espionage movie. And you look at the third one and it's a high flying Avengers action movie. And I think that's what's so great about the character and what's so great about his trilogy and why it's, I think, the best set of movies in the MCU is that it's so durable. It's so changeable. An Iron Man movie is an Iron Man movie. And they've shown some great diversity with Thor lately after Ragnarok, but what I loved about Winter Soldier is that it showed like just how different he can be while still being Captain America. I think that that is really, really, really valuable to point out. I think that's a really kind of intrinsic aspect of um, the, 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 the film itself and what uh, the Russo brothers and Marcus and McFeely did with, with Cap's character, with Steve Rogers in this film in contrast. To the first film. Um, but um, going over to you, Jeremy, um, with the same question, what do you have to what do you have to add you know in terms of the contrast between the first avenger film um i'd say this one is, is more along the lines of um you know he's kind of reaching his potentials almost in the first one it was him we know he's a good person in the first one and this is him kind of showing that he's still that good person but he's got these power right i, I guess you call them powers he's got this super strength and all that and so it's it's really cap coming into his own and showing that yeah i'm i'm a soldier but i also have these ethics and you know i I have to do the right thing and yeah i I think it's i think like justin said they're they're both great movies on their own and they are different movies but they're still the same captain america Okay. okay jermaine So I think what was important for me, I guess because I didn't read the comics, it was important for me to get the backstory of who um, of who he was. I mean, understanding that, you know, he was this little guy who, you know, had all this heart. But, you know, he was short. He was skinny. He wasn't strong, um, but he he had this heart. He also had a friend. Right. And so so his friend, just knowing that, you know, that was his friend, that kind of helped understand kind of help set the stage for what this movie is, uh, at least the movie that, that we're watching, The Winter Soldier. Um, it set the stage for what this movie is. And then seeing, you know, his development, you know, how he became Captain America. Because it, even though he had the strength, he didn't become Captain America overnight, right? And and just understanding that, understanding um, where he started, it informs who he is today. And so for me, it was awesome to watch. Okay. Cyber? Uh, Contrasting the two, I mean, Winter Soldier is by far uh, the better film of the two films. Uh, You know, Captain America, the first Avenger, it was the first of its kind. You know, it was the first introduction to, you know, we've talked about that. Was definitely, you know, there was a lot of different occurrences going on in that film. Was, you know, introducing him, it was getting you known him, you know, bringing in Red Skull, one of his most known villains that he's, you know, fought, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But there definitely was very heavy CGI for that film. And I think that's typically because, you know, it was a, you know, World War II era type of film. So they had to do a lot of that anyways. But Joe Johnson just brought a, a huge campiness to the film. 
So I think that's one of the reasons why it's not as good as this one, because this one, the Russos brought and made it a, you know, like everyone's saying, a spy thriller type of film. This is like action packed, like, you know, Terminator 2, you know, films like that type of deal. This film this feels like versus that other one that's a little more campier. And I nothing wrong with the campiness of the first one. Just you could just definitely see that this film was just a better uh, concoction of who Captain America was and where he was going. So I definitely think that this one was definitely the better of the two. Yeah, I think that I I I don't think there's that many. There's probably not many people who would disagree with you on that one. But uh, what do you think, Lord Deathman? Well, as someone who enjoys both of those films immensely. Um, I would be being disingenuous if I didn't say that Winter Soldier is the superior film. Um, just in terms of the, the story craft, the action, the way it's paced, uh, Winter Soldier doesn't really miss on anything. The score, the acting, the visual effects. Uh, but I, I think, you know, when you're talking about the first Captain America movie, you frequently hear the word camp come into the conversation. It has camp or it is campy. I think there are moments in that first Captain America film that are intentionally campy and aware of their campiness, such as when they're doing that sort of stage play where you have to sock old Adolf in the jaw. That is campy by design. It's not like Joe Johnson wrote it and wasn't aware of how campy it was going to come off. But what I think people tend to forget about that first film is that it's really indicative of the times it was meant to be set in. It has a lot of charm. There's a lot of heart to it. There's a kind of innocence to the film. Um, I, I think it was meant to sort of reflect the times that it was set in, uh, even though it's against this kind of horrific backdrop of war and, and conflict um, you know, on this sort of worldwide scale. And there's a love story to it. There's this romantic element between Peggy and Steve that, you know, also fits very well with the movie. And I think the first Avenger is highly underrated as a film by the fans because what stands out in your mind are those campy moments. Um, but, but you're not really thinking about Steve's development as a character going from, you know, this guy that's got a lot of heart but doesn't have the muscle to sort of back it up. And then suddenly the two are married together. And um, you have someone who's a really ethical uh, guy as, as far as um, having a lot of heart and, and knowing what the right thing to do is intrinsically. So without the first Avenger, I don't really see how you could have had a Winter Soldier. That, that's how great a foundation it is. But Again, looking at The Winter Soldier, it is the superior film because it's a quantum leap in quality from the first Avenger, uh, just on every single level. The, I mean, the score is perfect. The acting is perfect. The visual effects are perfect. Um, the, the relationship and character dynamics are far more sophisticated, far more complex, which, again, it reflects the times that this movie is supposed to be set in. You know, um, I think the Russo brothers did... What they do that, that is perfect with this film is they set, a, um, they set a world stage that just sort of reflects modern Warcraft and, and where we are with intelligence gathering, what the soldier's role is in today's world. Um, they do that so well. But I'll, I'll wrap up this comparison by just saying um, one, of the, one of my favorite things that the Russo brothers did with this particular film is that Every time I saw The Winter Soldier, I started thinking about, well, if, if you follow the comic books, this guy could become Captain America, right? Because because that's what happens in the comic books. And it would have been, we didn't get it, we never get it, but it would have been brilliant to see a Captain America 4 where you have a Captain America for the, the, the modern battle space, a guy who's not afraid of knives, not afraid of guns, explosives, where it... it assassin who's just a deeper level operator than steve could have been because of that winter soldier experience i think that would have been a captain america to remember but alas you know we didn't get it <laughs> yeah and i think it is important i i would definitely agree with any notion um that for me i think that the the, the captain america trilogy is like the best trilogy of the mcu without question i don't think 
I don't think any of the other ones. I mean, no, no offense to, to the the uh, the Tony Stark fans out there, the Team Iron Man fans or whatever. They're really good films. I love the Iron Man films, but they have their own separate category for me. Like you know, as far as far as like the MCU movies go, um, I, I really don't really you know. Um, there's 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 a certain nostalgia um, for me with with both of the characters, but. I'm a Captain America fan. Like he's my favorite superhero. So, you know, I mean, um, I guess I'm maybe a little bit biased, but as we continue to like move on, um, from that introductory scene and we get the return of cap and Nat back to shield and caps, you know, unhappy with kind of the sides, you know, mission that black widow was doing and everything at the ship and calls fury out on it and everything. And, um, you know, that leads into us getting the first look at Project Insight and the helicarriers and um, and then leads into essentially um, the Nick Fury chase scene, you know, getting shot at scene or whatever, essentially, uh, with the SUV and everything and whatnot, which is really freaking cool. Um, and kind of like, you know, leaving it right at that point when he kind of like escapes from there. Um, what do you think, Jeremy? Like... What same kind of deal? Like, what are your thoughts? What do you what do you what did you kind of take out of that part of the film? Uh, I loved that that chase scene in the in the car is uh, just incredible. Um, like I, it'd been a while since I've watched it, and, and, and when I did rewatch it, I forgot like just how cool it was. Just this automated car, the gun built in, um, and, and I and I do remember because I we watched it recently that it it was able to fly, but. Yeah, if propulsors were down or something like that. Some, you know, something was broken. It's like, all right, that'd be that'd be too easy to get out of the situation. But hey, I just remember it was just so cool, just the way he he waits and tells it to wait, and right at the perfect time he gets the gun out and just the driving skills. I, I it was so cool. It's 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 an awesome scene. I love it. That's probably yeah. And I, and I do another little call it fact was uh. I think either he requested or they thought about having his little uh, laser thing that he cuts the hole in to be purple um, as a little nod to him being Mace Windu. But they they went against it, and uh, I think it was probably for the best, though. Well, I mean, that's the thing about this movie is it just keeps on giving it to you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, from start to finish, yeah. like, there's just, like, scene after scene after scene that you could kind of say are impactful. So it's kind of it's difficult to kind of pick from the film and, and try to, you know, determine what you want to like bring up and cover compared to other scenes that maybe you don't. Um, Cause there's that, the thing about it is, is the captain America, um, the winter soldier is such a good film overall. It's so well done overall that it just never stops being good. There's no lull in it at all. Um, but what do you think, Justin? I agree. I mean, that's the thing that, I was kind of hitting on earlier is that this put the MCU into a new category. This isn't just a good comic book film. This is a good film. This is, I'm surprised it didn't win awards. Like this is one of those, if you took the superhero part out of it and the Avengers ties, it's just a solid film through and through. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Jermaine, what do you think? What are your thoughts based on that that kind of that 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 whole area of the film with the helicarriers and the Nick Fury chase scene? Our first, our, we also, of course, I didn't even I I should mention we get the first appearance of the Winter Soldier during that whole you know fiasco, which I didn't mention the first time. So, what are your thoughts on that, Jermaine? Um. So first, I, I just want to talk about the, the the Nick Fury scene when he's when he's in the car. Um, so Jeremy said it. I was like, oh, he stole it from me. Um, but it was he he was he was in his his car, his truck, SUV, whatever it was. Um, so he was in it, and I just remember like he was like uh, the computer was like down to thirty three percent, and it was like down to one percent, and like he just kept saying, wait, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then it was down to one percent, and he was just like. Pull the, the guns out and he started shooting. I was like, yes, yes, because it, it took someone who knew what he was doing. Um, so right. that was what that scene communicated. Like, this is someone who has been there before. Um, he's a he's a badass 
all unto himself. And so like I, like I was there for for that particular scene. And I just remember um, the scene when we when we first see is that the first scene when we first see um, is that the, the first scene where um, Captain America sees uh, Bucky or the the Winter Soldier? Um, I'm not certain. I just remember no. like no no not, no okay, no. So no. It's, just, it's, just first, it's, our, it's just our first time seeing the Winter Soldier in the film. Okay, so uh, I have another comment, and I hold it for later. Okay, no, no problem. Um, what do you think, Lord Deathman? Wow, that SUV chase scene is legendary, and I think I can't. All I can do is really echo the sentiments of my fellow panel members here in terms of how incredible that scene was. And I think you know, just trying to distill it down to the simplest idea of why it works so well is it had tension and it had suspense. We know that these are characters that are going to survive from movie to movie, but the Russo brothers kind of challenge that in that scene. You're not 100% sure that he's gonna make it out of this. You know, They made it into a really, really tight squeeze and they did it successfully. I'm like, is he gonna live through this? Or, you know, like, how is he going to escape? But it was brilliantly executed. And, you know, they create that moment where they, pay off the idea that S.H.I.E.L.D. has flying cars in their arsenal, but they're like, no, we're not going to do it here. We want to keep the movie as grounded as possible, and we don't want to, you know, give that as, like, an easy escape where this thing just flies off into the air and, and Nick make it away to safety. So, yeah, that, that that's definitely... I'm just really glad they gave the Colonel something to do in this film, because uh, I'm not saying that I was um, dissatisfied with his performances or, or what he got to do in previous movies up to that. But this is one where you knew that Sam Jackson probably lobbied for the idea for him to be very useful in an action scene. And his escape is flawless. The whole thing about that particular moment um, and that segment of the film was great. Yeah, most definitely. And I would agree with you, Jeff, um, in the comment section, that it is really cool when you do see the Winter Soldier and he does shoot that um, that like pro that projectile or whatever weapon that he has the um the, the guns that that um that the winter soldier has in this film are freaking like seriously sick like all yeah. the guns he has are just like really awesome um the um that like machine gun like a rifle or whatever he he has later on in the film when he first goes after captain america and black widow that gun is freaking awesome um like He's uh, he's always got cool guns. He's got the sniper yeah. later on in movies, and he's yeah. got the one that Rocket wants. He's like, he's like, what do you want for that gun? Grenade got, launcher. Yeah, yeah. He's got all kinds of like really. I mean, he's got like. Uh, I mean, and cyber. But I'll go to you, cyber. Next, you know, on that whole section of the film and like that whole that whole chase scene. What are your thoughts? That whole scene is just a really well done constructed battle. Uh, I mean, there. what makes that seem the best is really Samuel Jackson himself, because there are some great one-liners he says to the car when all this is going down as well. So I think there's a little bit of comedy element in there, along with the action and the suspense and the tension and all that stuff that really make that whole scene work so well together. And when, you know, he... Like, the car keeps telling him things are broken, and he's like, well, find something that works. That is one of the best lines in that whole scene. And and just his presentation of it was so much fun. But, I mean, everything from getting your first glimpse of the Winter Soldier to him blasting that, you know, slider mine underneath the car to him, you know, taking on all those machine guns and then, you know, pulling out his own machine gun to take them out so that he gets away... I mean, that scene is just really intense that whole time and just action, you know, action. It, it just is a really amazing scene, but I don't think it would have been as good unless that, it, you know, Nick Fury was in that scene and it was Samuel Jackson doing that. I, I just think that's what made it the best scene or well, that whole section of that is why it made it so good. It's just Sam Jackson. Yeah, I mean, you like, if you think about it, the Avengers had just come out pretty recently, you know what I mean? And... Um, Nick Fury really had a big role in the Avengers too, just like he does in Winter Soldier. Um, you know, and I, I think that actually goes into what I wanted to bring up next, which is 
Um, I feel like, um, you know, if anything, I, I, I know that we're not even like halfway through the film basically yet. Right. But I feel like it's important to mention, and I just want to get you guys' opinions on the fact that I think that the ensemble cast in this film is, is, is underrated completely. Like, I don't just, you know, I think that there's multiple reasons why this film works. I think that the Russo brothers get a, should get a lot of credit. I think Mark, I think Marcus and McFeely should get a lot of credit. I, but I think that um, the the ensemble cast in this film is very uh, over undervalued um, in the MCU fandom. I, I mean, even in the fandom, I think that like you know people don't really pay attention to it. So starting with you, Jermaine. I mean, what do you what do you think about that? Sorry, I hit my um. <laughs> I was on mute. Um, what do I think about um, the the cast and um, the, yeah, the strength the, the of the ensemble, actors? Yeah, the whole ensemble cast as, as and it being kind of maybe a little bit like undervalued or underappreciated. Well, I mean, typically, so I, I think this is not not Jeremy, um, my my fellow J man. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Justin. So he mentioned it earlier. He was like, it, it should have won um awards. Um so I mean I, I think I think this movie, like so many other movies, are just a victim of you know whatever is you know grossing at the box office, and especially if it's you know like uh action or comic book or or something of, of that level. Um, they're not really going to pay as much attention to it. But I think we all know that movies like this, like you have to have a lot of different elements in order for it to succeed. And it, one of those things that you have to have is you have to have strong actors who who are really good at their craft. Um, and I think that that's it's, it's unfortunate because those same actors could go somewhere else, do something else, and they'll win all of these awards. But you, you have to realize it's because you know, they've gone mainstream, so, so to speak, in movies like this, um, and they'll branch off and that's when they'll win all these awards. Or sometimes in the case of, of, of some other stars, they will have come into it, you know, with all these accolades. Um, so you know that they're good, right? We know that these actors are good. Um, it's just, it's unfortunate that movies like this um, suffer from, from that. Well, we have got um, an actual Nazi in the comment section, and I think that that is really awesome. I just want to point out and this. I just want to just go ahead and uh, send out a message to the uh, the Nazi person in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what color i got my nails done i got them done in the shade plan b there we go yeah so that's what i think about the uh the nazi party uh person in the comment session there you go brother uh or whoever you are um but anyways uh so justin um sure. do you have any you got any thoughts on uh the, the ensemble cast or the nazi person i'm gonna pass on uh, the latter there but uh you know what <laughs> What I think Marvel did really well is what Richard Donner did in the original Superman, which was cast unknowns as their leads and then surround them with these A-list actors. You know, by this time, Chris Evans was becoming a name, but the fact that they got Robert Redford in this movie, and if you watch some of the like special features about the movie, they talk about how he was writing, rewriting lines and being like, oh, I don't need to say all this stuff i can just say this and i can get my point across and the fact that he then came back and actually his appearance in endgame i believe is his last film like he's still around obviously but it was after that he retired and it just kind of shows what the mcu is and what it can do for an actor well just like you know, we just reviewed Thor: The Dark World, just like Anthony Hopkins. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just like Stellan Skarsgård. You know, it really makes mm -hmm. you wonder. Um, you know, I, I, well, I shouldn't say that. It's it's very interesting when you think about it that Marvel Studios and I don't know what Kevin Feige did 
um, like to manage to get all these actors and actresses to decide to like sign up with the MCU and sign like long-term contracts and everything and whatnot, like right off the bat, right there in the beginning. But he, he sold it. He did whatever he had to do. Um, but, um, Jeremy, what, what do you think, man? Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said, but yeah, I think, I think that's a huge get to get Robert Redford. Like he's, he's such a, a veteran actor and to get him into these movies was really cool to see. And, and we've got so many big name people now in the MCU. It was cool to see that this was probably one of the early ones aside from, you know, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, cause when we got Robert Downey Jr., he was, he, you know, nobody really knew what he was doing anymore cause he was, had the whole drug issue and all that. And so he's huge now, but at the time he wasn't And Samuel L. Jackson, he'll do any movie. So he doesn't really count until so to get Robert Redford. That was, incredible to do and and i think all the other side characters are really great too you we got the uh george st pierre who's batrock and all these other smaller characters they really there's no small parts in them they have small they have short scenes but everyone kind of is is uh brought up in this acting like everyone does a great job of it okay cyber I don't feel that the the all the actors were underappreciated in this film. I think that they were all, you know, perfectly crafted and, you know, picked for this role in these films. Uh, I definitely think Kevin Feige definitely saw, you know, the star potential in some of these, of course, you know, them becoming bigger after they do, you know, more of these films and so forth. But at the same time, these most of these people had already worked together with each other. Or they already had some sort of following already from their previous film work. So, I mean, I, I don't see this as being an, a, an underwhelming cast. I feel that they all got the respect they need because this film is considered one of the best MCU films. I never hear a lot of people say they hate The Winter Soldier. I don't hear a lot of people saying that they think it's, you know, a bad film, you know, like, uh, you know, like Thor The Dark World, which is, you know, usually considered one of the worst. Or, you know, any of the other films that they consider not as, you know, as good. Uh, and so I think that, you know, this is a really great cast. Getting Robert Redford, yes, was a great thing. But I don't think there was a lot to do to get him to come do this. Because I think that, you know, a lot of the people have connections. Kevin Feige, I'm sure, has a lot of connections with people. And I'm sure just the right thing was said. And that got Robert Redford in. Uh, I mean, having him on was great. I think that's a great, you know, having this veteran actor that's been in so many great films of the years, from Butch Cash and the Sundance Kid to, you know, uh, Jeremiah Johnson to, you know, Spy Game and stuff like that. You know, I mean, he's done a lot of great films, but I don't think it was as, you know, serious of trying to get him onto the movie as a lot of people think. Uh, and I just think that overall, the cast is really amazing, really well done. And I think they did get the, you know, just dessert that they deserve. Death Man. Yeah, I want to say that I don't necessarily know that I'm aware of a perception of this cast being considered underrated. But I will agree with you in a certain sense, Jeff, in that you take it for granted how well this cast sort of operates together. So uh, what I think that, you know, we might be struggling to sort of articulate here uh, is the idea that they just have great chemistry. And it's not just the, the big action set pieces or the serious tone scenes. There's moments where Steve and Nick are in an elevator. They're on their way to sort of take a look at the whole insight platform and they're having repartee in that elevator, like two colleagues that have been working together for a while that have kind of developed a shorthand. And that probably comes from the, their experiences together in the previous film. And you take that for granted, but that seems like that could have easily been stiff and, and kind of felt a little bit more rehearsed if you didn't have that chemistry. The same thing happens with Robert Redford and Samuel L. Jackson, when they're having their moments alone, talking together in the conference room, um, they don't have any experience prior together in the franchise, but because they just have such great chemistry together, those scenes, again, feel really convincing, really natural. Um, so I, I think the what really sold me about this particular cast together in this movie is that, that they just s seem to know the material, it was a great get to get Robert 
Redford. And that goes without saying, but I think he feels so comfortable in this because of his prior pedigree on spy films, Three Days of the Condor, Spy Game. This is a genre, uh, you know, that he's familiar with, that he has had some experience with. And it was probably easy for him to get into this world and understand what he was supposed to do in this superhero movie by giving him that context. So, yeah, I, I think the cast is fantastic. I don't know that they're underrated, Jeff, but I certainly know that people probably take for granted how much of a well-oiled machine that Scarlett Johansson, um, uh, Chris Evans, uh, at this point, Sam Jackson, Robert Redford, all, all of the folks in this movie together, just making this really great cohesive whole. Yep, most definitely. And um, moving on from there, I want to go ahead and get into um, the next phase of the uh, film, which is when we get Fury at Cap's apartment, um, we, we first see Sharon Carter. We get our first introduction to Sharon Carter to talk about another ensemble character that, you know, made their first appearance in this film and had a pretty de decent role. Um, we, uh, we do get, you know, at one point we, I believe right around that time, we get the Peggy Carter um, scene where Cap goes to see the elderly Peggy Carter. I think that that's kind of interesting. Um, and then basically we get Fury at Cap's apartment and um, Fury gets shot. Cap bumps into the Winter Soldier for the first time. We get the Cap throwing the shield at Winter Soldier, him catching it. Um, and then Fury actually dies in front, you know, in front of Black Widow and Steve. So, we're, you know, we think that Fury's dead at that point, basically. Right. I mean, um, and we get Pierce's intro. So, um, kind of from that, you know, jumping off of that part of the film, um, Jeremy, what do you, what are your thoughts on, on that, that, that aspect of the movie, that part of the movie? Um, that was great. Um. You know, it was cool to see Sharon Carter kind of get introduced as just the neighbor. And and I think she was the neighbor that Black Widow mentions at the beginning. Um, it was a nice little callback there. Um, and I, my, I mentioned the scene earlier with uh, Winter Soldier catching the shield like that. That was awesome. And I, 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 I really love the way after Fury gets shot, just the way Steve like kind of just goes into this hunt mode and just tears down through walls, jumps through through walls and all that kind of stuff and just chases after him. I thought it was really cool. Um and yeah, I I I think I remember that I did think that that is how Fury died. Like that, you know, that was it. Like he was shot. Like how do you survive I, mean, I still don't know how he survived that. It's impressive. But but yeah, it just I remember thinking at that time like wow this is it. Fury's gone. Jermaine So, um, for me, um, when I first see Peggy Carter, um, for, so, cause I watched the, the television show, I think it came out on Sunday nights or whatever. Um, and I got the backstory. I didn't really understand her character until I saw the television show. And so for them to kind of like put a, a button on it, um, in the movie, it was, it was really good for me because I didn't understand what was happening, what why you know what was her significance in the movie theaters everyone was clapping for her but i was like she's just a, a chick like what like what is it explain this to me um so to then see that he visited her in i guess his future um and you know it was kind of touching that she was on her on her deathbed um but to see that that was touching for me um that pulled on um, on my heartstrings so uh <laughs> as just some someone who's alive you know that was that was that was pretty cool um also when when nick fury is in his apartment and basically you know he's about to die and he gives him the i don't know the usb drive or whatever it was um and he said trust no one and then the neighbor comes in and he had to like make a decision because you know that that's in his mind. Um, like I, I was very curious about why did he trust her? You know, like just in that moment, he had to make that quick decision that he trusted her. Um, and of course, you know, she she ran to him and that kind of like validated why he, you know, he trusted her. But it was it, it was good to see Captain America make a good, you know, a good call, a, a good, I guess, a good judgment in decision making about you know that particular character. Yeah, Lord Deathman. 
Yeah. Um, starting from the scene where we think Nick is getting taken out. Well, let me go back a little bit. I will say that I really enjoyed the idea that Peggy Carter was still alive. I did find the special effects on her in terms of the aging a little bit distracting, but I thought it was cool that they kind of said, you know, she had lived uh, all this time and, and kind of was still waiting there for Steve. That was really like a nice surprise in the story. Um, but then when we, you know, get to Steve's apartment and the, the assassination attempt on Nick Fury and that chase, you know, the, the, I got two words for you there. If you weren't thinking this as a fan, it, it was damn Marvel, damn comma Marvel, because that was just flawless, right? I mean, they really bought the, the heat with those two super soldiers sort of reacting at, at just peak human um, and showing that you had a real showdown in terms of the skill level, the strength level, that this was gonna be a real competition. And to see Steve like jump across, he jumped across like an entire building out of the window of one bu uh, building and into the window of another building, barreling and just totally turning doors into, you know, like kindling as he, you know, barrels right through them. But yet he still got his eye on the Winter Soldier who's just like running parallel to him on another rooftop. I, I just thought it was brilliantly choreographed. It showed the speed of both of the super soldiers that you're, you're kind of on this new level um, th this new playing field of like super soldier action. And, um, and then when they finally have the, uh, the confrontation where he throws the shield and, and you get the close up of the winter soldier for the first time, um, I was like, damn, that eye black is really working, right? That mascara <laughs> that dude put on it. So uh, I was like, totally back, man. But th that, that was working for me. I was like, dude looks totally cool and emo at the same time. Um, I, I was there for it with, with all my heart. And, um, you know, Steve knows he's got something to worry about when when um, when the Winter Soldier stops that shield and just kind of gives it back to him and does a Batman and just like disappears. I was like, wow, um, th this is this is the Russo brothers really understanding the material. They really went into the Brewbreaker, you know, run and they're like the, the Winter Soldier is a boss. And, and this is how we have to sort of bring it to, to the film. Yeah, it was just great. Cyber. Uh, I mean, that scene with Peggy is interesting. Uh, it was nice to see that she was still alive, most definitely like everyone else has said. Uh, it was a nice kind of like, you know, way for Captain kind of to resolve that part of his history. Uh, even though, you know, he still looks like he did in 1945, and she unfortunately doesn't. Uh, but I thought it was a very heartfelt moment. I thought it was an interesting moment to bring in to kind of go from that, you know, lots and lots of action what was just happening with, you know, Fury, to all of a sudden having kind of that, like, slow moment, giving you a little time to relax, to get into more action, kind of, and giving you that little bit of kind of like that human element to the film. And then, of course, that scene in the apartment is just fantastic. Uh, I love, you know, that, you know, Fury is like saying, you know, given this like conversation that he's saying out loud, but yet he's using his phone to, you know, tell Steve, you know, ears everywhere. And uh, I just think that it's, it was really w well done. It was just like Lord Deathman said, like, it was like, damn Marvel. Yes. You know, you did a really amazing job with that. So, I mean, it, it just was so perfectly played out too, especially after, you know, Nick is shot and then. Captain goes after who shot him, and that's, you know, of course, when him and Bucky give their first interaction with each other in, you know, 70 years. And, uh, you know, he, you know, the Winter Soldier just stops the, you know, his, his shield as he throws it at him. It just, like, even in the trailer, that, like, blew my mind. I was like, what the heck is going on here? But the fact that, you know, you, you didn't really, I mean, you kind of can figure out that, you know, yeah, Bucky's arm is made of, you know, vibrating him too as well but you don't really know that until you, they really kind of get into the gist of it but at the same time it's like you know vibrating would probably stop vibrating so i think that was a really cool scene and all in all it was just a really good you know concept and really well done uh justin yeah i think i'm just going to repeat everything that everybody already said but i think that the only thing i can think to add here is that the peggy scene 
again shows that Marvel was taken off the kid gloves. They they're not playing it safe. They're willing to take the big swings. And it reminds me of their next movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, where they open with Peter's mom passing from cancer. It's like they're willing to do those things. And the Peggy scene is great, just the fact that they're seeing each other again. But the moment they reveal she has Alzheimer's and you see that look in her eye like, oh my god, I'm seeing Steve again for the first time, even though he's probably visited her you know, every day for since he found her. It's touching and heartbreaking at the same time. And the fact that they're willing to do that in a comic book movie shows the commitment Marvel has to telling good stories. Well, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, um, there's definitely a, a certain dramatic, serious tone to almost the entire film, basically, you know, um, like, you know, there it's, there is some levity here and there, like, but it's very little. It's there's a lot of action, you know, and uh, honestly, there's a lot of action, and there's a great villain, one of the best villains in MCU history, um, you know, which is, I mean, people talk about the character arc of Loki, um, and and all of you know, um, how his arc has changed and morphed over time, and he's become an anti-hero, and then we got the Loki Disney Plus series, Loki variant Loki. Um, you know, like going through his metamorphosis, look at like Bucky, um, you know, like, I mean, look at like, you know, he went from literally, um, one of the top like three villains in like MCU history, like to like Falcon and the winter soldier, you know, Mm -hmm. Bucky, you know, I mean, so look at that. I mean, just look at where where he's ended up, but, um, I'll, I'll stick with you, Justin, since you didn't have really, you know, much to work with at that point after everybody had already talked about it. As we move on and we and we go ahead and um, get the introduction of Pierce, obviously, and then we get, of course, the the elevator scene um, with Cap and and you know Grillo and the the all the Shield agents and the Hydra people and everything. Um, you know, uh, basically. Um, Cap jumps out of the elevator after he kicks everybody's ass and him and Widow, you know, are running. They end up at the mall, um, where S.H.I.E.L.D. is pursuing them. Then we get them in Jersey at Camp Lehigh and we get the Zola scene and the reveal of Hydra. Um, and you know, what, you know, what project, um, insight or whatever basically is really all about and everything. So, you know, what are your thoughts on that whole, at that part of the film, Justin? Uh, well, I'm sure everyone else in the group is going to want to talk that elevator fight, so I'll let you guys do that and focus on the thing that really surprised me was the Zola reveal. Again, as a comic fan, in in the books, he's this big robot with a TV on his chest that projects his face, and I was like, they're not going to do that. There's just no way. That's way too comic book for the MCU and for the tone of this movie, and the fact that they found a way around that and had his face projected on those monitors, it is still my favorite comic book nod in the MCU. Just the fact that they were able to pull that off and make it work was perfect. Most definitely. And I think that um, it, it really adds a different dynamic, like a different dimension to the film. You know, I mean, look, like we are, I mean, we already talked about the fact that this, this film overall is just so good. And there's like, there's so many great scenes, but the Zola scene just takes things into like a whole different direction. It becomes like a sci-fi movie almost for a minute. Um, yeah. And if, know? if you're paying attention and notice the little Easter egg that pays off in civil war, the fact that Bucky killed Tony's parents, it's like, Oh man, like that's a huge, it's not from the books as far as I know. Uh, and it's a huge MCU moment that we obviously see has major implications later on. Yeah. Lord Deathman, um, same query to you. That uh, What are your thoughts on that part of the film? Deathman, you there? Oh. Maybe there's something wrong with Deathman's audio. I'll go. Over, we'll, we'll wait and see if Deathman pops back up, and I'll go over to you, Cyber. So, <clears throat> yeah, that that's a great 
section of, of the film. Yeah, that elevator scene is really intense and fantastic. It's a really great scene. Uh, I particularly, I love the uh, scene at the mall, you know, when they're at the IBM store, or the Apple store, and they're trying to download the information onto the flash drive. And, um, you know, they're like, the clerk guy comes up and says, is there anything I can help you with? And kind of like what they, like that whole banter was really funny. And then ha making, having, you know, Black Widow asking, you know, uh, Cap to kiss her on the uh, escalator. I absolutely love that portion. And, he, you know, she, and she's like, basically saying, oh, you know, like, uh, I think you got some work on there on your kissing there, you know, Cap. You know? And he's like, kind of like, you know, I haven't kissed everybody, you know, ever. And uh, I think that was just a great dynamic of that scene. Kind of, once again, taking away from that action and giving you a little bit of a human interaction again. And then, you know, going to the, you know, Zola scene, which I was really, I love that. Toby Jones, I absolutely love Toby Jones as, you know, Zola. I think he does a great job. I love his accent. I love just his presentation of the character. And I thought that they did a great job of bringing him back to life, just like uh, Justin was saying, you know, you know, taking what we have in the comics and bringing it into that, like, old school IBM computer system that they use instead and having his face project on the screens and stuff was just really ingenious and fun. But that whole sequence is really fun because like the banter they have between each other, Zola and, you know, Cap and, and Black Widow and stuff like that. And then, you know, him basically kind of stalling them, you know, so that he can send a missile to them to blow them up was just like so much fun and a great scene. Uh, really impressed with that whole section of the film. It was really fun. Lord Deathman. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo in the background on my voice. Yeah, so there's uh, there's definitely been something going on tonight with the stream a little bit. But um, Jermaine, uh, what are your thoughts on that part of the movie? Um, so I'll delve into the fight scene in the elevator just a little bit. Um, and the, the part that um, I really, really loved was, you know, Cap was looking at, you know, people as they were rolling in. He looked at the, the sweat a bead that was running down um, the guy's face, and he he just assessed the situation. The doors closed, and he was just like, "Hey, so <laughs> is there anyone who wants to leave before we get started?" <laughs> I was like, "Yes, <laughs> let's go!" <laughs> like I, I loved it. And then you know, uh, towards the end when he was when he was trying to get away, and he just he dove out, and I was like, that established him as a badass all in all unto himself. Um, and then later, when he was with Black Widow, and they, they were, she was, uh, she had in, inserted the the USB drive, and you know, basically, she she told him, you know, it's gonna be about nine minutes, you know, once I put it in before some someone comes. And then later, she was just like, um, yeah, whoever did this, uh, they're smarter than me, just a little bit, not that much. <laughs> I was like, I love it. <laughs> like I loved all of those little small moments. Those little, those little uh, nuggets of joy um, that um, that all of that brought me. It just, you know, it's, it it makes you laugh, even though you know that they're in a serious, intense situation. Okay, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, I mean, not much to touch on anymore, but I'll find a few things <laughs> to say. Um, I don't think this has been talked about yet, but I loved the part where he jumps out and uses that shield to kind of catch himself. Cause, oh yeah. You know, he, he knows how to use it perfectly. And, and the way he escapes on his bike and takes down a uh, Quinjet. Quinjet. There it is. Thank you. Yeah. I know he, he takes down a Quinjet on his own with just a, a shield and a motorcycle. Like it's. I'm it's really incredible. glad you brought that like, up. A, I really am. I'm really glad you mentioned that. I really am. Yeah. Yeah. It was just so cool. How we did it and just the, like, there was so little room for error on that. And he just did everything just to perfection. And it's so cool. And, and one last thing that I want to point out, everyone's kind of touched on, but the uh, the Black Widow and Cap scene in the, on the escalator where she tells him to kiss him. And it's that thing that with Black Widow, like she knows all these little social cues and knows how to kind of be unseen because it's it's her, her background. Like that's just what she's always been able to do. And I thought that was really cool. They kind of touched on that. Just a little nugget put in there. Yeah, it's it's um it's it's interesting how um they continued to expand on it, her character arc and everything like that 
-hmm. even while in the movies like Winter Soldier and Age of Ultron. You know what I mean? Like they still tried to kind of like, you know, evolve her character throughout those those films, almost like vehicles. Um, right. Lord Deathman, are you still having audio issues? Yeah, I think Lord Deathman is still having a problem. Can you with guys audio. hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, Lord Deathman. All what right. are your Sorry thoughts? About that. What are your thoughts? No, you're good. What are your thoughts on? Uh, did you hear what I the the part of the film that I described? Yes, I did. But it would be great if you could do a quick paraphrase for me. I've been troubleshooting. Yeah, the uh, the the, the, cat, the the Pierce being introduced, the the elevator scene with Cap and him jumping out of the elevator after he after he goes through the fight, um, him and Black Widow running and ending up at, in Jersey at Camp Lehigh and the whole Zola scene and everything and whatnot. Um, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, a lot of goodness in that particular sprint in the film. And I, I have to say, you know, it would be easy to take the bait and just talk exclusively about the elevator scene, which um, really sets itself up as this kind of mission statement for a new level of fight choreography in these films. I think that's when you you see us push into a kind of another level. And that really comes from a strong director. Right. That's not um, that's not a director who's making this film to have like a bunch of friends at the end of the production. <laughs> this is a guy. These are guys that are pushing you and they're saying we've got to do something that the fans have never seen before. We've got to do something that just feels totally fluid, new. And, um, you know, I, I thank them for their sacrifice on that. That's all I'll say about that. But what really stands out to me about this portion of the film that you're talking about is really the the Nat cap sort of bonding that goes on and again i think this is one of the better renditions that you're going to see of black widow in the mcu i just loved her being this kind of more of a mysterious character operating in this morally gray zone and really picking up ethics from steve while steve also again i, I think the, the chemistry is there and they reciprocate she's teaching him a little bit more about them um, professional soldiering professional spy craft that you know it's a game it's not good and bad here it, winning is is coming out alive right it, it, it's not oh i got this great moral victory but i'm dead and and cap is trying to say well you know um that might not be all there is to it that you could do this job you could believe in something you could you know m make a statement about who you are and you don't have to kind of give yourself over to this kind of bankrupt world and, and system. So I, I really love those exchanges between the character. I love that they build on it as you get to that moment where they're in the bunker with the the, the low-tech, high-tech Zola, and, and they, they see that for the first time. Obviously, the, the payoffs that you're going to get to Civil War with that particular se sequence um, that, that were mentioned earlier here in the discussion. But... um. Yeah, for me, it was really the character, the whole Apple Store thing, the, them being on the run together, having, you know, pseudo sexual tension between the two of them, while also having this um, banter about the different sides of the spectrum that they're on in terms of professional soldiering. Yeah, I think that um, it's, it's interesting to talk about the relationship between Black Widow and Nat and Steve and Kat um, in this film um, and overall in the MCU, I think, you know, going into Civil War, obviously. Um, I think that, you know, um, essentially, I mean, if you think about it, like uh, Nat decides to like uh, go um, AWOL or whatever, you know, like go like refugee status or whatever, you know, um, like uh, um, with the whole Sokovia Accords deal for Steve. Um, you know, like that's basically why she did it. It was all for, for Steve. So, I mean, um, it is, it's, it's an interesting dynamic, but, um, you know, moving on, um, you know, further into the, the, the film, obviously, um, we get Cap and Nat hiding at Falcons. Um, they go after Stillwell and, you know, he spills a bunch of the beans about Hydra and everything and whatnot. And Pierce reveals Pierce and, um, being with Hydra. We, we get, um, we get, um, caps, you know, we, we get, um, our, our first introduction, I believe right around this time of Pierce actually meeting with the winter soldier and, and 
talking about resetting him and wiping him and everything and whatnot. And he can remember Steve. Like he can, he, he knows that he can remember this guy, Captain America. Um, perhaps that was maybe that might have been actually been after the the sequence where we get where we get the the reintroduction of the Winter Soldier into the film and he takes on um Black Widow and Cap, you know, and Falcon's kind of a part of it too. Um and you know, we get that whole deal with where, you know, where she, the shield hydra agents are are trying to get after Cap and Nat too. Um Cap and and the Winter Soldier fight for the first time. We get the knife fighting um which is really solid. Uh the choreography, the fight choreography is really solid in this film. Um and of course they get nabbed up, Nat and Cap do. Colby Smolder's character, um Maria Hill pops up and rescues them, takes them to a alive Nick Fury, who explains the whole deal with what's going on with with Project Insight and you know um and whatnot. So you know, and then we kind of end up, you know, from there formulating, they, they formulate their plans to, for taking down the helicarriers. But talking about that part of the film, going to you, Lord Deathman, again, um, what are your thoughts on, on that whole perspective, the whole perspective of that whole sequence of the film and us, us getting the Winter Soldier again? Oh, I think Lord Deathman is having audio issues again. Justin. Hey guys, I'm I'm here. Sorry, oh, I was, this time <laughs> this time the issue was just uh, mute. <laughs> oh, okay. Go uh, ahead, Deathman. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, you know this section of the well, you know what? I'll start off by saying that there there really is this old saying amongst um hardcore Marvel comic book readers, where no one dies in the Marvel universe except for Uncle Ben and Bucky. <laughs> so, and Gwen Stacy. Right, right, and Gwen Stacy. <laughs> Nobody stays dead in uh, Marvel comic books except those three characters, for the most part. And um, I remember vividly when the comic book for Winter Soldier came out. Um, it was hotly anticipated. DC was doing something similar around the same time with the Red Hood, uh, you know, bringing back a long deceased character. So it was kind of a neck and neck race in terms of who was going to get their story out and which one was going to be the bigger deal. And by far for me, it was Winter Soldier um, because that was just um, I, I was unspoiled when I read the review, when I read the reveal and I found out that the Winter Soldier was Bucky. It was a, a very well kept secret during that you know moment in, in comic books. So I was kind of sad that I wasn't going to be able to be surprised by that reveal in the movie, but I certainly felt it from the audience when they were like, holy crap, you know, there were people in there that didn't understand that the Winter Soldier was Bucky Barnes, you, you know, when the mask comes off. And I think the reveal worked really well, even if you were well-versed in the material. It's an exposition heavy section of the movie where you got to do a lot of storytelling on the move in the action, explaining insight, explaining the Hydra situation, explaining the big plan to take over everything. But they still keep it grounded, humanized, you know, the exchanges between Sam and Nat and, and Cap keep the film grounded as, as that trio sort of comes to the forefront to move the action along. And um, again, that reveal with the Winter Soldier w was just um, in incredibly amazing and, and satisfying as a payoff, uh, especially the the action confrontation that happened there. Most definitely, Justin. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that it is tough, and it's one of those things that I think about a lot with these movies: is what would it be like to watch them not knowing all of the things I know about the comics. I would love to watch this movie not knowing Bucky was the Winter Soldier. Um, but even so, it was it's handled incredibly well. And, you know, I've thought about this movie off and on for years, trying to dissect it and pick it apart. And it's just, it's so solid. The, the, the plan that Hydra has to wipe out their enemies and the plan that Fury comes up with to take down Hydra and just every all the parts work so well to get the motor going to where it needs to go. It, it's just damn near flawless. 
yes, and I want to point out too, of course, that we actually get the during the, this sequence of the film, we actually get the our first introduction of kind of the Falcon as the Falcon, um, sure. sort of. You know what I mean? So you know, which is obviously pretty pivotal. So, Jermaine, what are your thoughts? Sorry, I'm always having a fight against okay. the private chat. Um, <laughs> so, um, what's the question one more time? We're we're just talking about the you know the the part of the film where um you know uh where Cap, Nat and Cap hide over at Falcons and then um the Winter Soldier they they run they bump into the Winter Soldier and Cap fights him for the first time and everything um and you know Nat gets wounded. By the Winter Soldier, and you know, um, uh, you know, and then we get the you know the first reveal of Pierce actually, you know, um, being a part of Hydra and talking to Winter Soldier and telling them to wipe his mind and everything and whatnot, like that whole part of the film. Like, what were your thoughts? Yeah, um, so I'm trying to remember exactly. Uh, there was one part that like really stood out for me and trying to remember um you kind of you kind of mentioned it and i was listening to everything else and so i forgot it um so i think during 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 that um little part right there i think what what kind of captured my imagination was when he finally realized who who he was to him and it was just like a soft and tender moment um, and he he just basically he was just like Bucky, <laughs> and then you know the person that he knew um, responded back like who like like who are you talking about, <clears throat> and then almost like responded as a, as if to say, uh, I'm I'm upset that you even brought that name up, you know what I'm saying, um, and so you know I, and it made me think in that moment you know if if I'm talking to somebody who was my friend you know, like my best friend. And he either acts like he doesn't know me, really doesn't know me. Like that, that would kind of put me into a tailspin. And it, um, it, I'm sorry, that's just the way that my mind works. My mind just started thinking about that, like in that moment, like, but he, he didn't go there, right? He still stayed with the moment and he was ready, right? He was, he was, he responded, um, and so, like, I thought that was, like, a nice moment, um, especially when it comes to friendship. And, like, how do you respond when your friend, someone that you, you know, you believe to be your, your best friend, um, is responding to you in a way that is unbecoming of your friendship? Okay. Cyber. This is a, a great sequence of the film. <clears throat> it's really action-packed, once again. But just like with the rest of the film, there's that nice kind of like human connection scene we have in which was, you know, everyone referencing the the great talk between, you know, uh, Black Widow and, you know, Captain America while they're hiding out at Sam's place. They kind of have this like inner moment connection where they get to know each other a little bit better and you get a little more insight into who, you know, Black Widow is and that kind of stuff and just kind of, you know, determining what to do and stuff like that. You got that nice kind of reintroduction to Sam, kind of showing that he's on he's on Cap side. He's kind of always on Cap side, and so like that. And then it takes you to that great action sequence that you know where you know Cap and Bucky have this great fight, and there's you know you know everyone's fighting each other. You got Sam attacking people. You got Black Widow attacking people. I mean, you got this this whole giant sequence going on. I mean, the smashing through the bus was really cool. I mean, the, you know, Black Widow flying underneath the overpass was really awesome. I mean, there's so much great things going on to that. And then the fact that, you know, at one point during the battle between Cap and Bucky, and he pulls off his mask and he sees that it's Bucky, and he's like, in complete shock, he's like, Bucky? You know, you're just kind of like thrilled. You kind of get this like awesome emotion thinking, oh, wow, that, you know, the Winter Soldier is Bucky this whole time. Like, no stinking way. This is like really super awesome. And that just whole sequence is just really fun. And, I mean, just leads into, you know, the rest of the film giving us this great, like, more action just to bring us to this really high point of the film and give us this really great shocking surprise. And then we get, you know, a great, uh, you know, reintroduction to, you know, Maria Hill, her popping up and saving them and taking her 
and showing that, you know, Nick Fury, we get our another big surprise. Nick Fury isn't really dead. Because I'm sure there are people probably that one saw the movie were like, uh, is Nick Fury really dead? Is he, you know, is he? Because I remember watching in the theaters and going to myself, I'm like, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I can't see him being dead. Yeah, they seem to, like, make it seem like he's dead, but I just don't see Nick Fury being dead. I'm sure he's going to pop up again eventually down the road. And there was that scene, and that was just epic. And then him going over all the, like, you know, things that happened to him while in that, you know, whole incident, you know, fractured this and this and this and that being broken and all this stuff was just kind of fun. And just a, another great kind of reintroduction to another character. So, I mean, there's so much going on. in. The oh, we lost Cyber there for a minute. Oh. Jeremy, you're next, brother. All right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved all these scenes. I, I loved the the hand to hand combat stuff that they had, and I remember seeing, watching a uh, special feature of of how much they went into that training, and it was just so cool. Um, and I like that. Uh, even later on in um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Bucky is still with the paint scraper, still doing the hand moves with it. He's always practicing. I love that. Um, and another thing I liked was uh, that Black Widow was able to kind of hold her own in this fight with the Winter Soldier and. You know, she she got she got beat, but still she was able to kind of come at him with uh with something that he wasn't expecting. And and as I mentioned before with the reveal of, of the Winter Soldier being Bucky, like that was just that I was not expecting that at all. And it was it was, it was mind blowing. It was really cool to see. Yeah, yeah. Um the that's what that's one thing about the um about this movie is that there's a lot of really cool gadgets. Um, you know, that that cutting tool that Nick Fury used like to cut that hole in the ground and everything. And like the SUV and all that when he, when he got away from um, Hydra shield and the winter soldier at that one point, the stuff that like black widow, like ha ends up like having like, you know, that she uses when she fights the winter soldier, that little um, like zapper thing that she throws on like the winter soldier's arm and everything was really cool. Um, yeah. And her swinging over the, you know, like, like cyber said her swinging, you know, um, at that one point when she like, you know, runs away from the Winter Soldier, um, that was really cool. I love that she had the like the um, the uh, like the, uh, the the fishing wire, you know, like um, you know, uh, like um, weapon that she used to try to like choke the Winter Soldier. You know, like um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, yeah. But so basically, um, you know, at that point. We essentially, they, they, as I already mentioned, Fury and Cap and everybody figures out their plan and everything to take down Project Insight. Um, and so the, the trio of, of Black Widow and Falcon and Cap, Cap now costumed, go after their, the big mission. Um, the, you know, the final arc, basically the big battle of the film, um, you know, where we... Um, they have to synchronize all three of the helicarriers with those cards or whatever um, in order to like, you know, stop project um, to st in order to in order to stop, uh, you know, um, insight, the project insight completely. Um, and so obviously we get all the action scenes that go on with the fighting with Hydra shield agents. We get like Cap doing his speech and we actually get like, you know, shield agents um you know, uh, actually like siding with cap against Hydra, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, and you know, Sharon Carter's like fighting, you know, shooting it out with like Grillo and everything. Um, we get the one hand to hand scene with Sam, um, throwing down with Grillo, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, after he tangles with the winter soldier as like with his Falcon wings on, but that obviously leads to, um, you know, the whole, the, the great scenes with Black Widow where she, she reveals for the first time one of those like mask deals or whatever, you know, with the face, fake face. Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty neat. And then you, you know, of course, Fury pops up um, and we end up with, um, we end up with, you know, the final fight between essentially the Winter Soldier and Steve, Captain America. Um, and we all know how that, you know, outcome plays out, but it's a great fight, great hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, the, the fight choreography was great. The stunt work was great in this film. Um, you know, I think that, 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 that that's without question. And obviously we know that, you know, that Bucky, you know, ends up saving 
Steve out of the water when his helicarrier goes down and they actually take down, you know, Project Insight. So, and then, we'll, you know, when we, once I get your thoughts on that, we can maybe talk a little bit about the, the end credit scenes. But starting with you, um, Jeremy, what do you think, what are your thoughts about, you know, the whole, that whole final battle? Yeah, I, I love the final battle. Um, the way Steve was trying to get him to, to remember him and, and saying, you know, I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to do that. And just the, the dynamic of that changed because Steve could have, you know, probably beat him with the, with the amount of just uh, adrenaline going through him and all that. But, yeah, just to him to, to not do that, getting shot and just never kind of giving up on their friendship was kind of a cool thing to see. Yes, it is. It's, it is very touching. It, it it really is. Um, it's a it's a big emotional moment. Um, mm -hmm. Jermaine. Um, the final battle scene. Uh, it was like it was great. Like it was epic. Um, it was everything that you were looking for. Um, it was like it, it, it truly was um, amazing just to watch, just to sit back and it enjoy what the screen was giving you um and then finally towards the end just to kind of echo what uh what, what jeremy just said um it was that that rec recognition of friendship and it basically meant like the end of you know their fighting um that was that was restorative um especially the that little like what I was talking about before, like friendship, like, uh, is this really my friend? And then, nah, I get it. I remember you. Um, I'm accepting this and I'm, we are going to, to move on. And I think, um, especially, um, when you think about the television show on, um, on Disney plus, um, what is it? I, f I forget the name of the, um, the television show. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> just how um, he treats his memory of Captain America, um, you know, just to see that arc from beginning to end. Um, that was that was really good. Realizing um, I, like I saw I saw I saw this movie when it came out. Right. And then I saw the, the television show and to see it on the television show play itself out from beginning to end. That was it was real touching to see, you know, where they started and then way to end it sure most definitely um lord Deathman. yeah that third act is a monster you know i, I just want to take a moment for us to acknowledge what a boss the winter soldier is i mean sometimes subtle sometimes you, you know heavy when he jumps off of the overpass and lands on that car and just completely destroys it with the weight of his arm but then there's a moment where he can be really subtle and quiet and kind of roll a grenade <laughs> right underneath the car you, you know to 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 um to smoke nat out of her hiding place um that you know i imagine it was a performance that was crafted not just by um you know the actor playing the winter soldier but all the stuntmen that had to put on those wigs and do some of those moves as well uh just a brilliantly realized on-screen villain um and i just wanted to take a moment to really appreciate how they lived up to that villain and, and surpassed my expectations there but the third act overall could have been legendary just on the strength of the action i mean they really pour it on. They really move you from set piece to set piece in, in a at really sort of clipped and frenetic pace. But there's also a lot of drama in that third act. You know, you have um, Fury sort of recovering from his wounds and the reveal that he wasn't, you know, uh, killed. You also have that flashback of uh, of Bucky and um, of Bucky and Steve back in Brooklyn. You know, but before Cap's transformation, that was a great sort of touching little moment there in the third act. And like everybody pointed out, the, you know, the 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 friendship between the two characters as you get farther along in the third act, and and Steve really trying to wake, uh, wake. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on his name. Trying to get the Winter Soldier out of that Manchurian candidate like haze. But what really stands out to me, um about that third act and what really sold me on the idea that the that the MCU was taking a step in a in a new direction was reaching a new level of sophistication had successfully sort of 
mastered blending these different genres together. It's really Steve's speech, that rallying cry, that speech that he gives over the intercom on the helicarrier uh, was just incredible. At, at that point, you know, Chris Evans owns this role. There's never going to be another Captain America. We wouldn't dream of a recast at this point. I don't know how many takes that took him, but it's a really moving moment that sells you with the character. And it's it's just a plus with the all the action that's going on. And even um, Mackie's quip at the end, he's like, you know, did you write that down? <laughs> you know, that that doesn't undercut the the, the emotional drama that 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 speech had when i first saw it i was really like wow this is this is not just a good superhero movie you know like justin said this is just a great movie period um and it's just going to go down in history of one of as one of the classics of the genre which it is and speaking of you justin i'll go to you i'll go to you next okay uh you know to mirror what death man was saying like it it really this movie did have Chris Evans come into his own and really claim the role of Steve Rogers. You know, the the first Captain America and the first Avengers movie filmed at about the same time and he was filming Avengers before the first cap even came out. So we didn't really know, you know, what the audience would think of him. By Winter Soldier he's able to make it his own and really be Steve. Um but the scene that always sticks out to me in this block is in every movie, Steve has a saying, I can do this all day. Um, he says it to Schmidt, Red Skull. In the first film, he says it to Tony in Civil War. But in this movie, when he says it to Bucky, what he says is, instead of, I can do this all day, he says, I don't want to do this. You're my friend. And I can take you down, and I will if I have to, but I don't want to. And that scene always gives me goosebumps because it's just so good. It's just great writing. Yeah, no, I would agree with you 100%. And I think that, um, I think, I mean, look, look, there's so much that you could say about this film, but just moving on to kind of wrap up this review, um, what is ever what is everyone's th- oh cyber i'm sorry you know what i, I let me get I, I never got your your take on the on the final battle part for or the film and everything and whatnot i'm sorry sir go ahead and jump in uh, i that was just really fun really uh fantastic ending to this film you know that already was a really amazing film to begin with and i just really enjoyed that whole battle sequence between bucky and cap at the end i like you know that you could see bucky was you know fighting whatever demons was in his head and trying to figure out you know what's going on here you know why am i kind of remembering you why am i doing this why am i here this type of deal and you can just see you know as he's you know interacting with cap that you can see that things are being twisted in his mind and he's trying to figure those things out and because you can see in the fight even when they're fighting like he's still going pretty much full force but at the same time you can see that he's kind of somewhat pulling some of his hits and and how he's fighting him and stuff like that so you can see there's conflict with him and so i think that just makes that scene even more enjoyable and more fun and just makes it uh you know very realistic and like what you know what somebody if they were brainwashed you know would have to deal with and you know you got that like i said you got that great end sequence you know where the helicarrier that you know after they destroy each other goes flying into the building and sam has to run for dear life that whole sequence was really awesome you see the one helicarrier bash down back into the shields area there and causing giant water flow going on and all that kind of stuff and you just get this really great ending that's just really fun and really uh, action-packed and i think you know uh, one thing i don't know i didn't hear anybody mention but we can't forget stan lee's cameo in this film when he you know he's it's a security guard at the museum where Steve goes and gets his old costume. And he's like, into that scene, he comes in, he's like, oh, I'm fired. It, absolutely priceless. And another great scan lead cameo. And I just, I think it's a fantastic little scene there, you know, prior to the final battle. That is just perfect. And I think fit very well into the film. But that whole end sequence is just so much fun. You really are blasted. You know, you love it. I love how Cap wakes up in the hospital and 
Buck, uh, not Bucky, but Falcons right next to him, and he says, on your left, like he did at the beginning of the movie, and I think that's just a really great way of ending the film. Yes, and so moving, jumping on to the end credit scenes, Jermaine, what are your thoughts on, on, on the end credit scenes at the, uh, at the end of the film? Man, I'll be honest. Um, I didn't watch the end credits oh, this did? last time. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch it. I'm certain. Like the more you'll talk about it, the more I'll remember. You can't. You but can't right forget when you always watch. gotta wait. Yeah, it's true. But I was like today. You know, I was at work. I was teaching, and then oh, like, I had I to rush it, home, and I had to watch. And so I. No, you know. I understand completely. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'll go. Over, I'll go over to you, Jeremy. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the end credits? Honestly, you're gonna have to remind me what they are. I mean, I watched them, but I. It's the Scarlet Witch. Does anyone cover. know where I can get a new co-host? <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. the, it's the it's the 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 Red Strucker and Hydra and like the reveal of yes. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I that, that, there's too many end credits. Okay, I'm getting them all mixed up. I just watched Shang Chi not that long. I watched it again this weekend for a second time. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yes, though, no, those are so, those are so cool. I, I, I'm super excited. Um, because, because at least for me at, at that time, it, it, I didn't know who they were. I, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I, I've, I've gotten more into the movies than the comic books. I've, I've read a little bit of comic books as a kid, but I didn't follow them along a lot. Um, so for me, a lot of this stuff was like a big surprise. So to see them in there and, and to not know, the full story, but to see like the powers that they have was so cool to see. Yes, most definitely. Um, Justin. Um, you know, the, the winter soldier one is short yep. understated. It's interesting and has more implications for civil war as he's discovering himself, uh, which is cool. Um, and obviously the action, the fun one is seeing the twins. Um, the sad part is knowing that they can't call them mutants because Fox owned mutants at the time. But just knowing that Age of Ultron was coming and we were going to see a power level in the MCU that we hadn't seen before. I mean, Thor has powers and the different suits have powers and Hulk and shit, but this was like real superpowers in the MCU for the first time. And that was exciting. Yes, I would agree with you. Cyber? Uh, those end credit scenes are really fun, uh, especially the twins one. Uh, it was a great kind of prelude to Avengers Age of Ultron coming out. Uh, definitely, like Justin said, you know, that they couldn't use Mutant at the time because Fox owned the, the name and everything. Um, but knowing that with WandaVision, they kind of alluded to the fact that Wanda kind of was already had powers before the supposed interaction with the, you know, the gemstone, uh, Infinity Stone, and, you know, that they're trying to get back to those roots now that they own the rights to the X-Men and mutants again. Mabel will finally get the true traditional because – Really, I was really shocked when, you know, they killed off Quicksilver so quickly in Age of Ultron. I like they just introduced the character and then they kill him off. That was kind of to me just felt dumb. But that that introduction kind of showing you Quicksilver and showing you Wanda and the end of Civil War was just fun. A really great prelude. And then, of course, that scene with, you know, Bucky and stuff like that was really fun, too, because I was just letting you know that we're going to be seeing Bucky more. We're going to see more about the Winter Soldier and that we're going to learn more about it. So I think they were really fun little post credit scenes. Lord Deathman. Yeah, I enjoyed those. I remember those post credit scenes vividly, but like many on the panel, there are lots of post credit scenes that I've forgotten, <laughs> but not the ones for that are associated with this film for some reason. So, you know, seeing the twins and uh, Baron Strucker uh, sort of refer to them as miracles and seeing the manifestations of their powers uh, the Scarlet Witch sort of doing a hex and Quicksilver moving around his cell really quickly. I was like, wow, you know, we are getting superpowers here and they're not really connected to being a mutant. Um, I was a little trepidatious about that because I was like, you know, uh, is everybody just going to get their powers from the Tesseract or or something like that? It, it just seemed like a weird kind of nerfing of, of the Marvel tradition of mutants. You, you never want to sideline our, our X-Gene folk. 
But in any event, um, I was super thrilled to get those characters and the idea that they were going to be villains, um, you know, moving forward with the Age of Ultron. I know the other Stinger, I believe that's the one where uh, Bucky sort of resurfaces if I'm not mistaken, and, and he's kind of like hanging out at the museum and, and you kind of know that he's around and his brain is kind of out of the blender. Um, but yeah, it got me super excited knowing that he'd recovered some sense of self and that potentially he could end up on the, on the you know, the other side of the equation as a superhero and, and not just as some, um, although I loved seeing him as a villain. I was like, how, how are we going to balance Um one of the reasons I really wanted a Black Widow film early on in the tenure of the MCU was so that it could be a prequel so that we could see the Winter Soldier again. <laughs> it, it was, you know, really just surreptitiously like, how do we get another, you know, outing of the villainous Winter Soldier? But yeah, love both of those end credit scenes. And I do remember them quite vividly. And I want to just shout out to uh, Janae um, in the comment section. It's good to uh, good to have you around, my friend. Um, and hopefully we'll see you back on the Bleeding Edge sometime soon. Um, but I want to go ahead and go around and give everybody a chance to plug anything that they want to plug really quick before we call this show um, Kaputs. Um, Justin, uh, Jeremy, why don't you go ahead and tell us about um, We Are Marvel podcast? Go for it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's uh, like you said, it's called uh, We Are Marvel. Uh, we've been doing it almost a year now. Um, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Where I, if I find a new spot that people listen, I try and get us on there if we're not already on there. Um, but we're on all the social medias as We Are Marvel Pod. And you can email us, We Are Marvel Pod at gmail.com. We've got a website, We Are Marvel Pod.com. So, yeah, just about anywhere online on the internet, you can find us. Um, yeah, that's our podcast. Uh, every, we do. Uh, I, I guess I can give you an idea of, or Justin, yeah, give give an idea of kind of yeah. what the show's about. So once a month, uh, we pick a movie at the top of the month. We're going in release order. We started with Iron Man, and we've made our way through Phase One. Our next one's going to be Age of Ultron with our special guest Jeff, uh, but will air at the beginning of December. Uh, and then the rest of the month, we do topic episodes. If something new comes out, we'll review it, or we'll do some wacky, like, top five favorite weapons, or, you know, what would we do in a sequel to this, that, or the other. So uh, we try and have a lot of fun, and come check us out. Definitely. I, I just looked at your website right now. It looks pretty cool. Um, Thank you. I like it. Um, and, of course, um, uh, Jermaine... Do you? I I know I don't know I don't know if you've had any time to do anything with your with your podcast recently or anything like that. But do you want to plug anything? Yeah. So actually, uh, it's kind of great that you that you <laughs> that you have me on today. So on tomorrow, I just started a brand new podcast, and this particular podcast is dedicated towards Star Trek, um, and it's called Trekkers Delight, Ooh. so you can catch us on Instagram, on Facebook, we have a page, we have a group, we have an Instagram account, we have a Twitter account, now on Twitter it's a little different, instead of Trekkers Delight, it is Delight Trekkers, um, you know, someone else has already taken Trekkers Delight, but... Um, we are going to be live streaming. This is going to be our first foray at this. Um, now, it's a group of us. It's more than one, more than two. It's like 15 of us all together, and we're just going to kind of rotate. Oh, that sounds we're, really cool. We're going to rotate so that we can have as much content as we, as we possibly can. So for us with, uh, with Star Trek, we have the movies. We have the Kelvin universe. We have the television shows. We have individual episodes that like we have a whole lot that this is like a treasure trove of, of information that we can talk about. And believe it or not, for some reason, it, it just kind of happened this way. Um, as I was looking for people to, to, to be in it, like the overwhelming majority of us really, really love Deep Space Nine. So Deep Space Nine, I can anticipate will be um, the, the show that we'll talk a whole lot about. But of course, you know, we have um, on tomorrow, um, Discovery um, is coming out. So that's what we will be talking about tomorrow. If you love I, Star Trek. I like Babylon 5. Back nah. in <laughs> <laughs> I did. Nice one, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a classic. 
Lord Deathman, you want to plug anything? You want to plug Sakar.freeforums.net? Absolutely. But first, I just want to thank you for having me on the show as always, Jeff. Um, you are uh, a gentleman and a scholar, so I really appreciate the opportunity to interact with this uh, panel here. All these new faces that I'm meeting for the first time. Awesome to see uh, positivity in the fandom. Everybody appreciating, um, you know, what goes on in the MCU because it's a really great uh, media franchise. That being said, um, I do moderate a show occasionally uh, called The Podcast of Champions. Um, I highly encourage you to check us out on YouTube. Just do a search for Podcast of Champions. We're usually the first result that you will get there. We have a ton of different content on a lot of different media franchises, including the MCU. We've done Star Trek content. We recently reviewed the James Bond film that came out. We talked about Dune just the other day. So there's a lot of breakdowns. There's a lot of reviews and analysis on our channel. It's a great panel of guys there. I think, um, you know, if you're interested in all of the stuff that's happening in pop, pop or so-called geek culture, you really appreciate what we're doing there. Um, you can also check us out online at our message board, which is sakar.freeforums.net. That's a message board um, that's been slowly building a lot of momentum under its leader, the Grand Master there. You'll find a very, very chill environment where everybody's talking about everything from Lord of the Rings to um, Star Trek to Star Wars to whatever your particular flavor of fandom. You'll find a group of people there talking about it. It's real easygoing, not a whole lot of trolling or, um, you know, bickering or getting real clicky there. So. Hope to see you there if you're if you're listening to this transmission. Yes, I would definitely advocate for anybody out there to consider joining sakar.freeforms.net so that you can be potentially a champion on the podcast of champions because we have a really good time on there. Um, on our recordings on Saturdays, we have a good time every weekend. Um, and uh, we've got an interesting uh, roster over there of different characters that come on the show. Um, you know, so, um, I definitely would, you know, would tell anybody to check out sakar.freeforms.net. Um, and, uh, you know, Lord Deathman, thank you for being on here again, brother. We appreciate you. And, um, Cyber, what about you, brother? You want to plug anything? Well, of course, if you enjoy our stuff on here, you should definitely check out my other solo content on YouTube as well under name Cyber Night Shark as well. If you type it in, it'll be the first thing that comes up usually. Uh, but I do all kinds of reviews, unboxings, all kinds of stuff, parodies and stuff like that. So definitely check that out. And of course, like, you know, uh, all these wonderful podcasters saying definitely check them out too as well. We have them on here for a reason because we enjoy their content and want to share it with you guys out there watching the MCU's Bleeding Edge. And also, you know, if you get a chance, definitely check out Sakaar. Uh, they're amazing on there. They're fun, just like Lord Deathman said. They got some great different topics they talk about and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And definitely check out, you know, uh, Rizzle, too, as well. That's where me and Jeff first met. Uh, it's a great little app, kind of like TikTok. I think it's a little better than TikTok. Uh, you get more of an interaction with actual people and meet people, and you can collaborate more better on there and stuff like that. Uh, but we do all kinds of stuff on there, too. Uh, you can also find Jeff under True Knowledge as well. So definitely check him out there, too, as well. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> yes cyber most definitely and please everybody out there all we ask that you do is if you're going to decide to check out the mcu's bleeding edge youtube channel um or check us out on twitch or facebook live please follow our facebook page please follow us on twitch please subscribe to our youtube channel um and follow our podcast we are on every directory and like 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 just like jeremy said if you can't find us on a directory, please let me know so I can I can get us on there. Um, yeah. But I just want to thank everybody out there, all of you guys. I want to just you know extend you know a big thanks to all of you for coming on and doing this review with me and Cyber. Um, we really enjoyed having you, um, and um, you know to everybody out there who who enjoyed the live stream and everybody here who ends up catching this as a YouTube video tomorrow or the next day. Uh, we really appreciate you. Um, and uh, take care. We'll uh, see you all next time. Yeah, thanks for having us. We appreciate yep. it. Uh, Thank you.